ITV's W5. There's times where you feel worse than you ever have. Tormented by sickness and fighting for a diagnosis. Some of these people have been ill for years and years. People have gone through hell and back without getting answers. Do you feel like the Canadian healthcare system has failed you? Yeah. And I am no Canadian Obama. One man's journey of change, pride, and equality. Fighting became a way that I dealt with a lot of these issues. The gap between the rich and the poor is expanding along racial lines. We feel empowered because we're on the right side of history. CTV's W5 with Avery Haynes. Welcome to W5. Canada has a big problem with a disease that comes from a tiny tick. Now, Lyme disease has been around for years, but the number of people getting it has exploded tenfold over the last decade. And despite those shocking numbers, Molly Thomas discovers that getting a diagnosis and treatment in this country for chronic Lyme disease can sometimes be impossible. know in the back of your mind, you know you're sick with something. You know yourself better than anyone else. In North Bay, Ontario, a once vibrant 25-year-old is fighting to get her life back. After seven years, Nikki Kent is still struggling with Lyme disease. It's not easy. There's terrible moments through it. There's times where you feel worse than you ever have. Nikki was a shining star in high school on the cheerleading squad, a model. After graduating, she traveled the world until she couldn't ignore her symptoms any longer. A few years um, after high school that I really knew something was wrong, it was more so just little things started happening, um, but I didn't put any of them together. I started noticing when I would go to read a book. I would read a page and then I completely don't even know what I just read and I'd have to go back and read it again. I lost 25 pounds, um, maybe 30, all in muscle, so I had no energy. And then I was catching pneumonia, like, every year. I was sore from head to toe. It was like I went for some long marathon. <laughs> I immediately knew, okay, Nikki, like, this isn't okay. You gotta just believe the patient and believe the person that they are sick. There's something wrong with them, and they need to get help. It was heartbreaking for Nikki's mom, Allie, to see her daughter in so much pain. There was something going on. We thought it was then concussions. She just seemed to stall on most of her words and didn't finish her sentences and started forgetting a lot of things. She was having maybe two good days out of seven, more sore throats and more bed sweats and uh, achy joints. Things were building up. 17 tests in two years. 17. Lots. Like, yeah. <laughs> Lots of testing, so many specialists, so many answers, apparently. <laughs> like, it, so many possibilities, I guess you could say, thrown at me, like that I have this, I might have that. But did any Canadian specialists have any answers for you? You know what, I did have a doctor bring up to me um, getting a Lyme test. We did bring up that I had a tick bite a few years before that in high school. Lyme disease is a bacterial infection that manifests itself inside the human body after someone is bitten by a tick. A telltale sign that a tick has infected you with Lyme disease is a bullseye rash. But Nikki didn't get that. Less than 30% of people do. Canada's public health agency also acknowledges that two-thirds of Lyme cases are missed from surveillance. Caught in a haze, Nikki was no exception. When she took the standard Canadian test, it was negative. So getting a negative was telling me that they didn't have Lyme disease and that it was something else. So we moved on. So three years of thinking I didn't have Lyme disease. For Nikki, that meant three more grueling years of being sick and not knowing what was wrong with her. Ticks are tiny, but dangerous for passing on infectious bacteria. They're found in wooded, grassy areas right across Canada. 
Because of climate change, warmer seasons have given ticks a year-round pass. It's no wonder confirmed cases in Canada are 10 times what they were 10 years ago. Even Canadian superstars Justin Bieber and Avril Lavigne have been upstaged by a disease doctors could hardly explain. Why don't you try to get out of bed, Avril, and just go play the piano? It's like, are you depressed? This is what they do to a lot of people that have Lyme disease. They don't have an answer for them, so they tell them, like, <laughs> they tell them, like, you're, you're crazy. I've realized uh, after a series of tests that I have what's called Lyme disease, which is a super silent disease that's not really um, very well known. Um, doctors, it's very hard for doctors to test for it. It's hard to test because Lyme can present itself as other things. In Canada, it's even harder to detect because our standard test, called the ELISA, looks for antibodies but is super sensitive. If you test too soon, antibodies likely haven't formed yet, so it's easy to get a negative. If you test too late, the disease can morph or hide. This is what sent Nikki Kent down the wrong path. Well, I got a bunch of other tests, went on, then they thought, you know, possible lupus, and then... So you were never diagnosed with Lyme in Canada? Uh, no, not in Canada, no. No, the test I ended up getting done was in the States, outside of Canada. So I still technically don't have it in Canada when I'm in this country. Nikki finally got a positive result with a more advanced test from the U.S. Is that frustrating? Very. Like, extremely. And it, it just bothers me because I just know I'm not the only one. W5 reached out to Lyme patients and found desperate voices in every corner of the country. My body kind of starts to convulse and shake and I get really confused and I can't talk. I've been in and out of a wheelchair. Started to get really bad uh, headaches and migraines. Uh, vertigo, dizziness. Lyme has changed every part of my life. It's controlling. You get to a point where you realize you're not in control anymore and it's the Lyme disease deciding what you do. I had the Lyme test done in Canada about three times and it was always negative. Dr. Maureen McShane survived Lyme and has treated Lyme patients for over 17 years. She lives in Montreal but set up a practice in Plattsburgh, New York, because she had more freedom to treat there. They passed a law in New York State that doctors could choose how they treated uh, chronic Lyme disease. It amazed me when people started coming from Newfoundland and Nova Scotia and British Columbia and Saskatchewan, Manitoba. It just utterly amazed me that people were traveling that distance, but they were desperate. Desperate because in Canada, doctors have been handcuffed. Here, testing for Lyme has limitations, and clinical diagnosis based on symptoms isn't widely accepted. Treatments known to yield results, like long-term or multiple antibiotics, are considered unconventional. Doctor, were you afraid of losing your license for, for treating a condition that you knew you could help? I almost fainted the first time I gave out prescription for two antibiotics at the same time because I was so apprehensive about losing my license. Um, but they responded, and it was almost like a miracle. Like, I had never, ever practiced medicine where I would see responses within a month, two months, three months. Their lives were changed. This was a huge impact, and some of these people have been ill for years and years. Why do you think there's such a division about Lyme amongst physicians? I believe that evidence-based medicine is the problem. The medical journals that we doctors are raised on, we go through medical school, believing in Journal of American Medical Association, New England Journal of Medicine, the British Medical Journal. If it's not evidence-based medicine, forget about it. They will not publish an article on treatment, adequate treatment of chronic Lyme disease. And so your regular doctors in Canada have no idea what to do. Good afternoon, everybody. It's even more confusing for doctors when public health officials weigh in. In 2019, Nova Scotia's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Robert Strang, retweeted a comment that referred to the chronic Lyme community as a cult. He then released this statement. The alternative views on Lyme disease are not evidence-based and promote potentially harmful treatment and prevent people from seeking proper diagnosis. In Pefferla, Ontario, Justin Wood is trying to put answers in the hands of patients. 
I can tell that this is an adult female black-legged tick. He runs the only private lab dedicated to testing ticks in Canada. Looks like we have a couple positives here. Ticks are incredibly dangerous because they can be very difficult to find and to see. And when they do bite you, they have the ability to transmit not just one, but multiple different pathogens that can cause diseases. Justin is now face to face with the tiny attackers that gave him Lyme disease and drastically altered his active lifestyle. I was mountain biking, I was snowboarding, spending pretty much all my free time outdoors. One day it felt like everything just kind of fell off a cliff immediately um, and I spiraled really quickly down into really intense, very debilitating symptoms. A negative test in Canada meant seven years of suffering for Justin. My life went from being a very engaged and active athlete and academic to somebody who couldn't use a computer, couldn't read, couldn't interact with their friends, couldn't walk, couldn't take care of themselves. His battle now is to help Canadians avoid what he went through. If we can give people options for, you know, knowing that they've been infected or they've potentially been infected or exposed to tick-borne diseases and give them a chance to, you know, treat that early before it becomes established. If you catch Lyme early, it can be treated with simple antibiotics. If not, chronic Lyme could mean a long and expensive road to recovery. One that took Nikki all the way to Florida for experimental therapy. I knew going into it that it wasn't gonna be easy or it wasn't gonna be a like quick fix. I also knew going into it that it might not work. I was at the point where I could hardly walk and I was 90 pounds. I had no muscle left and with all my blood work and all my testing, it basically had shown that years and years of poor health had been going on. Do you feel like the Canadian healthcare system has failed you? Yeah, 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 I do. I had to quit work and sell the business hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on what you're doing, what supplements you try to, things you try to, places you go for help. We just felt like the system wasn't saving her. So we had to do something about it to figure out what's going on. I can only imagine how hard it was on her to, to have to see me at my ultimate lowest. We need a little more help from the government for all those patients that have nowhere to go. Coming up. I felt like I was 90 something years old. A devastating disease takes its toll. It was like all of my family's money to help me. When W5 continues. It's one of the most demanding jobs in sports. The NHL is a, a grueling, uh, tough season. Coaching hockey heroes in the NHL. Kurt Muller played over 1,300 NHL games. He's coached another 1,200. He's a hockey lifer. All I could say is I was in great shape at the time. Until Kirk Muller was bitten by a tiny and dangerous arachnid, a black-legged tick. Basically, the best way to explain it is I felt like I was 90-something years old. There are more ticks in Canada than ever before. Millions of them flying in on the backs of migratory birds every year. These eight-legged parasites bite, take their victims' blood, and leave behind infectious bacteria. This causes Lyme disease, and the symptoms can be vastly different from person to person. Muller was blindsided by it in 2017. I thought it was in decent shape for a 54, 50-year-old guy. Um, and, and you know what, it hit me. And I'll tell you, when it hit me, it, 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 it knocked me out. I couldn't walk up the hill at our, at our cottage. I'd have to sit down. And then all of a sudden, more symptoms started to kick in. So the dizziness of picking something off uh, the floor was enough to make me, you know, have to go sit down. Muller spends his off season at his cottage in Kingston, Ontario. It's a hot zone for ticks. Let's have a look up here. In 2017, he was working with his cousin to clean up the land for a family wedding. You get rid of those dead branches up there. I did a lot of woodworking out here, cleaning up the brush. 
And uh, my daughter got married in July, and it was like uh, three or four days after the wedding where I got my first symptoms of uh, what I thought at the time was just a, a flute. Very unusual at the time to get it in July. Kirk doesn't remember being bitten, and he didn't get the bullseye rash. A trademark sign of Lyme, but less than a third of those bitten get it. But he personally knew about Lyme and told his doctor. And mutually, we both were saying, hey, let's see if that's a possibility. And we sent the blood work out. And, and uh, when I got it back, clearly I got uh, uh, told that I was uh, tested positive for Lyme disease. Kirk's test was done in the US. He was treated with just one dose of antibiotics. When I got those antibiotics, and within three days, four days, I started at least going, hey, I, I'm not dizzy right now. I can function, I can focus, and do the day-to-day -day basis that necessary for the NHL. Kirk was lucky. For thousands of Canadians who suffer from Lyme, getting a diagnosis or treatment isn't that easy. Know that people have gone through hell and back for no good reason without getting answers. Former Green Party leader Elizabeth May introduced a private member's bill back in 2012, calling for a national Lyme strategy. To the Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. I dedicate tabling this bill today to a very brave young woman, Nicole Bottles. W5 chronicled Nicole's condition and desperate search for answers back in 2009. I have breathing problems. That was probably the first thing that started swelling sometimes. Pretty much every doctor in Canada that I've been to was very unhelpful. My story reflects the experience of many Canadians. The experience for many Canadians has hardly changed. Seven years after our W5 interview, Nicole spoke at a national Lyme conference. Our nation is on the cusp of creating a paradigm shift in the way we confront Lyme disease. It was a precursor to a national framework intended to bring better tests and treatment to Canadians with Lyme. We must do better. The National Lyme Disease Framework has the potential to be the catalyst for change. I don't want to say it let down a lot of people, but I think that we had hoped that this would do more. It's been four years since that conference. Nicole is out of her wheelchair and much healthier. Her family has spent their life savings on treatment even a stem cell transplant in the U.S. Hundreds of thousands. I mean, it was like all of my family's money to help me. It really does make you ask, like, what price tag can you put on your health? Nicole wants her lifelong battle to trigger Canada's top health agency. There definitely needs to be some sleeping reform in how we diagnose people. Um, less reliance on testing and more reliance on, on clinical diagnosis, which is the only way that this can be really accurately diagnosed. We asked Canada's public health agency if they've made any changes to how Lyme is diagnosed. They declined an interview and in a statement said, Diagnostic labs in Canada are continuing to evaluate a new protocol. This modified protocol replaces the confirmatory Western blot test with a second ELISA and may offer improved performance in early stage infection, although studies are ongoing. It doesn't sit well with MP Elizabeth May, who brought the original Lyme bill forward. Yeah, we asked the public health agency about advances in testing. I mean, you saw their response. What goes through your mind? They're back to this fixation on lab tests. These tests are imperfect, and we haven't made a lot of progress in making them more perfect. But the fixation on lab tests is opposed to saying, what the, what the strategy says, that the clinical diagnosis is what you have to rely on. You saw the response from public health. Did it surprise you? I have to say I was shocked. I went back to their website to reread the framework, to think how could they prepare an answer for W5 without reference to the federal framework. Do you think that it's a top-down issue? I mean, in, in terms of acknowledging that Lyme is a, a real disease here? This one stumps me. There's no profit motive, but you still have a culture of denialism within some parts of the public health community. Canadians with Lyme disease need help, and they are not getting the help they deserve. It took Nikki Kent another three years to get diagnosed for Lyme, and even longer to find immediate treatment. 
neither of which she was able to access in Canada. If I could have just taken off those three years and gotten treatment three years ago, I already would have been in like such a better place than I am. So yeah, I was angry, <laughs> I was upset. It just kills me to know that there's so many other people suffering as well, so. After five months of intense antibiotics in the U.S. and an enormous amount of money spent, she's still fighting. You're putting your body through so much fighting. You're fighting off the disease. You're putting antibiotics in you. You're, you're in this fight mode that you hardly have in you to begin with. Nikki, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling pretty good. I didn't think I could get to this point, but um, I'm doing a lot better. I still have quite a ways to go, but um, it's really great seeing myself at a point I haven't been at in years. I see a huge difference in her, and I think we did the right thing. So it's all worth it? Yeah, of course it's all worth it, right? I'm her mom, so yeah, I, I would switch bodies if I could with her, right, to save her. So yeah, it's all worth it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nikki. Happy birthday to you. Nikki can now celebrate small victories, like a birthday. All right. <laughs> what does that support of your mom mean to you? Having her do that for me is <sighs> meant the world. I don't even think I can thank her enough. Now, had Nikki seen a doctor right after getting that tick bite, a single dose of antibiotics could have prevented years of devastating long-term side effects. And there's new hope for those with chronic Lyme disease. You can find out more about a promising new treatment on our website, w5.ctvnews.ca.